Hello and welcome to Big Picture. I am Vishal Dahiya and today we will talk about the issue of fire safety in India. The national capital witnessed one of the worst fire tragedies in almost two decades when at least 43 people were killed and several others injured in North Delhi's Anaj Mandi on Sunday morning. Now, initial inquiries point out to many glaring negligencies such as locked escape routes, no fire safety equipment and no fire safety clearance from the authorities. Rescue operations, operations were also hampered due to narrow lanes. This tragedy has once again brought in focus the fire safety norms in India and to what extent are they being adhered to. For more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests in the studio today. Let me first introduce the guest to you, beginning with Dr. Sanjay Kumar Tomar. He is a Divisional Officer, Delhi Fire Service. We also have with us Dr. Naveen Kumar Bhatnagar, the ex-DIG of NDRF, and Mr. R.G. Gupta, City and Policy Planner, is also with us here in the studio. Let me begin with you. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Thomar, and let's first begin by trying to understand what are the various fire safety norms which we have in India, and then we'll come to the other aspect of whether most of us are adhering to that or not. See, initially the fire services uh, were uh, municipal, uh, municipal subject. You know, different at different points of time, different laws were enacted and implemented. In Delhi, uh, as for example. Uh, the first fire safety, fire prevention act was uh, implemented in the year 1986. Mm -hmm. But the buildings were existing, which were more than 15 meters in height. And after the Gobala incident fire, uh, where we lost our one officer, the this act was enacted. But this act, any act, mm -hmm. fire act, is being implemented prospectively. Mm -hmm. It cannot be implemented uh, retrospectively. Okay. This is the first problem. Another problem is that that the buildings which are existing, you cannot implement the new law on mm -hmm. those buildings. Okay. As far as residential buildings are concerned, uh, most of the casualties in Delhi are happening in those residential buildings which are not covered by any law. Okay. Only buildings which are having height more than 15 meters and special occupancies which are now covered are uh, not being covered earlier. So, mm -hmm. you cannot implement new laws in older buildings. Okay. So, you mean, you mean to say that, you know, the older bil buildings are the ones which are, uh, and, and obviously, they're, they're more at risk uh, because uh, their uh, uh, entire structure is, is old enough and, you know, there are no uh, norms which would have been followed when the building would have been made specifically from this perspective. But also, the, the interesting fact out here is that congestion and the way the cities are both expanding and the number of people there. And this is one of the reasons in the recent case as well, wherein although there were more than a dozen fire tenders at the mm. location, only one could reach the particular building. So in this congested area, like uh, special areas like Karol Bagh, Sadar Bajar and Old Delhi, we uh, saw these uh, problems. But the problem also lies in the expansion. As you said, the expansion of the city is happening we are going up and up and we are horizontally also expanding. But the norms which are supposed to be uh, there are not non-existent. Mm -hmm. So, as I said earlier that in those areas there is a protection of law. Okay. So, you cannot implement and go there that building which is more than 100 years old that this is the law now and you have to implement that. That okay. only Delhi Fire Service Act came into existence in the year 2007 and mm -hmm. the rules was enforced in the year 2010. Now, we have a mechanism now mm -hmm. that every building which is coming up in Delhi okay. uh, is to the plans should be forwarded to us from the building sanctioning authority. Okay. And then we gave, we scrutinized the plans of the building as per the occupancies and the risk involved and the, we in issue uh, fire safety guidelines to them and after compliance of those guidelines, we conduct the inspection. Okay. But that mechanism cannot be implemented in the existing building. And as I said earlier, the residential building which are less than 15 meter in height, there is no rule where you can enforce that you should have an alternate exist, exit available. Mm -hmm. In the recent yesterday's, day before yesterday, there was a fire. And the people are dying because there is no provision in our laws to have an alternate exit. And one 
that is available normally in the residential building okay. that is being blocked either by the parking or by the storage or you have uh, electrical installation in that building only. Mm -hmm. only. So your only available means of escape is blocked by the these uh, obstructions. Okay. And you have mm -hmm. a uh, fire risk in those escape routes. Okay. So and, you and have to think your exit route should be clear. Number one, there should be uh, no uh, non availability of any electrical installation on those exits mm -hmm. and your exit should be protected. Okay, so, so and, and that also, you know, compounds the overall problem when, uh, you know, you go ahead and try and rescue people in this situation. Let me bring, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Bhatnagar here. Dr. Bhatnagar, uh, there's some very interesting facts and let me just, you know, put them out here. According to the India Risk Survey, uh, there's a data which says that there has been almost a 300% increase in case of fire incidents in commercial buildings between 2014 and 2015. Now, this is a data which is about three to four years uh, old. But this also seems to clearly point out that there is an increased risk, which is which further increases as uh, you know our days or months pass by. So in terms of the mechanism which we have, not only the norms and regulations, but in terms of mechanism, and also from the fact that how these norms are being adhered to, are they being adhered to at all, both? by the owners of the commercial properties, the residential properties, or the authorities involved as well? Not at all. Even then, the planned area, industries already having this uh, fire license and all these things, even then they are making the negligences. Because I have personally visited and seen all the uh, this type of cases, because lot of uh, wire, electrical wire, they don't have the safety norm of electrical wire. So, spark, definitely spark is the main cause. Secondly, Maximum industries are having the chemicals, hydrocarbon chemicals, mm -hmm. fumes having the uh, dangerous fumes, uh, poisonous fumes are coming. So definitely if, if any fire comes, so definitely the maximum uh, stampede will be there okay. and uh, your death cases will be reported. In this same case, same case happened here due to these fumes, hydrocarbonic uh, fumes were there So um, and people were running. And people were, uh, uh, some people uh, became uh, died due to the stampede. And uh, people were not trained. If the training should be given to the people, oh, okay, you can't stop this uh, making the building and industries and all these things. But you should spend the money. You have, all the state governments are having uh, enough money with them. Why you have not given the training to the, that particular area and people? Mm -hmm. Your MCD staff is there. Daily they are visiting in that area. SHO police is there. The beat constable is there. Why they are not visiting in this area? Okay. Why have they have not reported all these things? You have enough money. Uh, central government is giving. Your, um, uh, uh, why you have the enough staff with you? You can hire the agencies. They are able to give the training, uh, rescue training. Okay. And uh, in this case, uh, some uh, body suppose died, but we have the ten minutes with us to uh, recoup them. They can be uh, again uh, this uh, alive mm -hmm. if uh, we have given the training as uh, CPR. Okay. Some uh, some uh, devices are there. We can with their help we can do it. Why the uh, they are they have not been given the first aid kits and all these things to the okay. industries. Okay. You can't stop. You are taking the uh, this uh, license and money and all these things uh, on uh, the go official money. Then why you are not giving uh, for their safety? You are not giving the kits to them. I'm afraid. Really, I am uh, shocked that uh, government is sleeping. Every government is sleeping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so clearly, you know, two points which uh, we uh, have understood so far here is that uh, one, not adhering to the norms, uh, not having proper, uh, you know, uh, audits in place, proper safety equipments in place, uh, and getting clearances, and also on top of that, no training. The you know the we, basic training to deal with fire <laughs> or deal with the first aid that is there. But let me bring in Mr. Gupta here, Mr. Gupta. The moot question here is, why are we in such a situation? Is it because of the faulty planning in terms of, uh, you know, expanding our cities or does it have to just do with the, the laws being adhered to by the people? We have complete laws about the planning. Please listen, listen one by one. The first plan of Delhi was prepared in 1873, then 1914, then 1936, 1956, 1962, all the plans on, under the act of 1957. Mm -hmm. If you see Delhi today, 
the entire area of Delhi bounded by Haryana this side, UP this side. So is planned one. It has 18 main zones A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, mm -hmm. not I, J, K1, K2, L, M, N. Complete plants are there. Now please listen to the biology about the fire. It is there, very much there. Okay. But somebody has to read it. Fire post, 2000 square meter. Fire station, 1 hectare. Disaster management center, 1 hectare. Along with suitable open area. Fire training institute, 3 hectares. Where to locate? The details are given here. But somebody has to prepare the plants and do it. Please listen, please listen here. here, here. Mm -hmm. All the journal plants are there. Okay. Let them see, tell this is not correct, this is correct, this is not. If correct, not correct, then you do, do the correct because they know much more than the planners. Okay. Planners naturally they will say that two fire stations will come, one here, one here. With the distance, with the roads, everything. And plants are prepared based on this one. There is not a single plant. You can tell me anyone. Maybe that this particular area, it is A. Means the area. But here, the provision of substation is a difficult one because the land is not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. If not there, you provide on the boundary of this one. Okay. C, the space is there. D, too much space is there. But somebody has to work from the fire department. That please, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the fire master plan you're talking about? Has, should be there. Mm -hmm. But not, I have not seen it. It's not there. Okay. Except journal plan we show. You see any journal plan, the pro pro provisions are there. The rules I have just read, all the details are here about the fire system. Okay. But people don't care it. Okay. Dr. Yes. Tomer? Uh, <laughs> he is only asking about the provisions of the fire stations in Delhi. And no, the fire master plan. You know, you know fire every, master every city plan. needs to have that but, fire master plan. But yes, yes, we yes, have yes. to uh, see the inbuilt fire systems which are available and what is happening. No research has been conducted that why these deaths are happening, what are the occupancies. Because in my personal opinion, law should be made as per the uh, research. Mm -hmm. So no research has been put while making these bylaws or why people are getting trapped okay. and what are the occupancies, what are the percentage of the occupancies which, in which the people are dying. Mm -hmm. So I, as I said earlier that out of the total, we receive generally 29,000 plus calls annually and the maximum number of fire calls 30%, 38% fire calls are we, we are receiving in low rise residential buildings mm -hmm. and 50% of the total deaths which as per the records available with the Delhi Fire Service are happening in the residential buildings okay. which we think that they are the low hazard occupancies. Mm -hmm. So my question is that we, we have laws for high rise buildings, we have laws for assembly buildings, we have laws for storage and industrial buildings, wherever we have been implementing or we have been able to implement these laws, the number of deaths and number of fire calls is much, 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 much. Has, has come down considerably. Yes. But what about the older areas, yeah. the congested yeah. areas? I, uh, the, the same question I'm uh, raising uh, once again, mm -hmm. that the existing, there is no law which can be applied retrospectively, number one. Okay. And there is no law which can regulate. the. These are the minimum standards okay. that you should have because now we can see the uh, lots of mixed occupancies are coming up, mm -hmm. government has allowed, okay, there is no problem. But when you are converting a residential area into a commercial area, then risk increases many folds. And, and accordingly, and you have to accordingly the infrastructure, accordingly, has, to the infrastructure has to be built up. There is no doubt that okay. we have increased the number of fire stations, we have increased the number of uh, manpower, and we have uh, have the, all the sophisticated equipments which a modern fire service mm -hmm. should have. But despite that, in my personal opinion, the occupant of any of the occupancy or the individual has the prime responsibility to see whether in which building he is going, what are the hazards available, whether if there is one escape route is blocked, how I can uh, use the alternate exit. And, wh and no, whether yes, it has fire there safety is, equipments. There, there is fire safety equipment comes many, many later, mm -hmm. at a later stage. If we four people are standing here all, and the only one exit which is available in front of me is blocked by fire. So where is the alternate exit? Nobody thinks. That's the basic. And we are, yeah, this is the basic. We are using metro, we are increasing the risk, life risk in uh, getting these occupancies converted mm -hmm. into commercial 
the risk to life increases manifold. Okay. Uh, say for example, we are using metro mm -hmm. and there is a underground metro. Now that has been planned and executed in a uh, as per the international norms. Mm -hmm. Now you can find alternate exits are available. There is a uh, restriction on combustible material mm -hmm. and every uh, alternate arrangement of electricity is there. Okay. Non-combustible material is used in almost all the construction. When you so plan a building like that, then you will not find a, a single source of fire incident. Okay. So basically all norms will have to be adhered to. That's that's what yeah. that's what you're saying. Mr. Gupta, I'd like to bring you on one point, specific point here, which uh, Dr. Thoman has pointed out again. He's pointed out it in his uh, first response as well. How to deal with, uh, you know, fire situations in congested areas, the older areas, the areas uh, which uh, I, you know, existed even before these laws or the guidelines yeah. were made in terms of fire safety norms. Our latest master plan in 2017, the laws are like this. I just read the guidelines for locating fire station and other fire fighting facilities. Number one, location should be that fire tenders are able to reach three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. Number two, fire station should be located in the corner plots as far as possible on main roads and windmill to entry. Okay. Underground water pipeline for the fire, fire hydrants has to be there. All the rules are given there. Mm -hmm. But naturally, they have to say yes or no. They have to detail it out. And we will do it. We but but, but it. It, it works both ways, Mr. Yeah. Gupta. It works both ways. You know, the occupants of that particular yeah. building, be it a commercial or a residential right. building, will also have to adhere to the norms. You know, most of the fire cases which we hear is <coughs> that the occupants or the owner did not even bother to get a fire safety uh, certificate uh, from Sir, the agencies. You are correct. This is not possible in a wall city, not possible in the area, but possible in John C, John okay. D. John E, others it is possible. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Doc, doc, Bhatnagar, you know, your point on that, and since you brought uh, initially the aspect of how not only the uh, fireman, you know, uh, but also general mm -hmm. people have to be trained, yes. have to be, you know, given that basic training. Adequate. But apart from that basic training, the onus, as Dr. Tomer is pointing out, is on the authorities as well as the residents as well as the citizens to yeah. abide by the rules so in your experience how much of you see you know this this uh, uh, thought on uh, the citizens part uh, that yes this has to be followed yeah. fire safety how much is it is it is it on the top priority agenda of everybody or is it only when we you know yeah. re read or hear about a fire then we get concerned about it yeah in this case ajatpur case you see uh, people have complained so many times to the police, to the MCD, to the other authorities also, but nobody has taken the pain to go visit their area and to see that how the, this type of industries are going on. And uh, really, I am surprised why the agencies were sleeping mm -hmm. after making this complaint by the residents. So uh, today in the morning uh, on the TV show, uh, people were crying that we have written so many complaints and all these things that uh, this type of industries are going on. No uh, such thing is going on, uh, wires are li like uh, in a haphazard manner. So, but nobody taken pay, uh, pain, nobody, even an MLA of that area, it is, it was the prime duty of that MLA mm -hmm. to look after these things. Yeah, so, if, if, we, if we come to the common citizens, you know, those who are the owners of such industrial buildings, uh, the onus lies on them as well. And as uh, Dr. Thoman is yes. pointing out, in most of the cases, yes. uh, you know, the, either the escape routes are blocked or there is no fire safety equipment out there. And obviously, you know, the, those who are staying there or, or sleeping there are not trained. And then there is no fire safety clearance as well. So the onus lies there as well, in addition to the authorities. Yes, authorities are responsible yeah, to go ahead and ensure. Yeah, Isn't main, that Mr. Patnavi? Yeah, main, definitely eastern action should be taken against the authorities. Uh, on the national te uh, television, I am uh, telling this thing. Not first time, in so many time I told. If you will take the stern action this time, then you will see the result will come. Definitely next time it will not happen like that. Okay. Okay. Yes, Mr. Gupta. So I can help in the preparation of the plans, 18 general plans of the fire departments. I can help. No problem. <laughs> okay. Yes, Dr. Amit. Sir, uh, fire safety certificate is not a guarantee that fire will not happen, number okay. one. Number two, the inbuilt system, whatever been provided. It is the first duty of the occupant or the owner of the that building or occupancy that you have to operate. Suppose in this room there is a fire and fire extinguisher is there. 
-hmm. and nobody is operating that fire extinguisher then what is the use of providing that fire extinguisher okay so in any case the fire services can check the provisions of the fire fighting system which are required as per the law number 1 mm -hmm. number 2 they can check randomly and after the expiry of the fire safety certificate for renewal only and that fire safety certificate does not guarantee you but it it is the uh, responsibility of the owner that okay. you have to maintain those system and one should operate those fire extinguishers or the fire fighting system that they should work when you when you when you say that there has to be you know regular checks as well and all that are you talking about the fire safety audit here and if you are then what are the norms for fire safety audits are being conducted and how often are they conducted yeah. or are they conducted at all so uh, in delhi fire service act there is a provision there is a rule 27 which stipulates the building which require fire safety clearance from the fire service department and as per the provisions of the act the building plans should be referred to the fire department for scrutiny and after scrutiny we recommend that see this building for this particular occupancy you require detection system fire exits and uh, other extinguishing system mm -hmm. and then after compliance of the building once the building is made and all the systems have been put to work we check the operability and once the system is checked then we issue them fire safety certificate which is valid for 3 years okay and renewal is due after 3 years and when what about the uh, vulnerability analysis or or the fire safety audit which i'm talking about yeah so giving this, certificate is one part but auditing the entire process you know the certificates have been given or whether the equipment which is there is it still functioning or are these people adhering to you know maybe the escape route uh, was made when uh, uh, you know you guys gave a, a fire safety certificate to a particular building but 6 months down the line maybe yeah. the escape route has been blocked so yeah. how do we you know keep that in generally check. that is being uh, done on getting a complaint or from the anybody or uh, due to uh, the uh, staff constraint and that is uh, generally being done on getting a complaint or uh, whether we random go inside any building and we find if there is a fire and system is not working then we issue we cancel that fire safety certificate issue to that occupancy okay but so, what about the Ill illegal uh, this structures the, that is illegal com uh, this uh, area uh, illegal that construction is not that is not that 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 is there that is there which service. is a very important yeah. part and then the last one i would like to bring yeah. mr gupta there on that you know what all norms are being uh, uh, applied and you know uh, they being fulfilled as well for example let's let's assume for a minute that the authorities are diligently going ahead and doing their duty the citizens are also going ahead and doing their duty getting all these uh, uh, fire safety certificates putting all the equipments in place as well but then how do we deal with situations like as i said earlier in areas which are either congested because of the older constructions or they become so because of the illegal constructions congested we can't do anything uh -huh. a and a but for other area let them let us prepare the plans of all the fire services mm -hmm. and then we start and for the proceed further i can help prepare the plans okay okay uh, on on the last question uh, you know uh, dr tomar and then this is on the training part mm -hmm. since you know uh, it's it's very important as uh, uh, dr bhatnagar also pointed out it's it's quite important for the common people for the citizens to know as to what to do in case of a fire so how far are we able to do that are you as a mm. fireman satisfied with the kind of no. training common people are given no we have to make this uh, a compulsory subject in the education system because uh, whenever we i go to training i i see that the people people's awareness in fire safety is is negligible okay so many 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 uh, qualified persons are not having a basic knowledge of the uh, in fire system or fire safety so i must uh, share with you that the awareness or training program must be given at a uh, education level starting either after primary or it must be made uh, essential to okay. everyone already it is there orders okay. are there training is going on in the schools and all this thing or disaster management act and policy 2009 mm -hmm. very much it is clearly indicated it is mandate 
for everybody to conduct the training of this uh, fire uh, mm -hmm. safety honorable supreme court's order are okay. there and then maybe maybe we have to scale up on that aspect yeah. as well uh, so there it is uh, as our panelists have pointed out there are stringent fire safety norms in existence but what is required here is that uh, not only do the authorities uh, adhere to the implementation of those norms in letter and spirit but also we the people that is you and me and others uh, who are the common citizens, they also need to go ahead and ensure that whatever building or whatever place they are in, be it commercial, industrial or residential, ensure that all fire safety norms are adhered to and as our panelists have also pointed out, also ensure that there is basic training taken by everybody or everybody is trained in the aspect of dealing with the fire situations or the first aid as well in such situations. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic and different set of guests. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.